In the 1950s and 60s, the CIA conducted a sinister secret program to master the science of mind control. While the secret studies might sound like the stuff of horror science fiction, sometimes the truth is even stranger. Beginning in 1945, American and British organizations teamed up to gather as much military, scientific, and technological research as possible throughout occupied Germany. As German research facilities were seized, Allied force groups began to confiscate war-related documents and materials and interrogate scientists. One particular document was the Ozenberg List, a catalog of scientists and engineers working at the service of the Third Reich. Run by the Joint Intelligence Objectives Agency, or JIOA, the covert operation dubbed Operation Overcast, then renamed Operation Paperclip, involved having 1,600 German scientists and their families brought to the US during the Cold War to work on America's behalf. The objective was to use German intelligence to develop America's arsenal of biological and chemical weapons, ensuring that they didn't fall in the hands of the Soviet Union. While President Harry Truman sanctioned the operation, he forbade recruiting any Nazis or Nazi supporters. In spite of this, the JIOA bypassed this directive by hiding any incriminating evidence of possible war crimes from some of the scientists' records. Concerned that the Russians had developed mind control programs, the CIA wanted to find out how US spies would hold up if it was used against them. With this in mind, Operation Bluebird, later called MKUltra, was created by Dr. Sidney Gottlieb. Despite going against the Nuremberg Code, which prohibits experimentation on human subjects without their consent, MKUltra was conducted in secrecy for over a decade and experimented with, quote, the use of biological and chemical materials in altering human behavior. This amounted to many experiments being carried out on an estimated thousands of US subjects, many of whom did not know exactly what they were signing up for. Some of the subjects included sex workers, prisoners, and people with terminal illness, and many of the experiments involved the administration of illegal drugs. According to journalist Stephen Kinzer, who wrote the book Poisoner-in-Chief about Gottlieb, Gottlieb wanted to create a way to seize control of people's minds, and he realized that it was a two-part process. First, you had to blast away the existing mind. Second, you had to find a way to insert a new mind into that resulting void. And what did Dr. Sidney Gottlieb believe was the best way to blast away the existing mind? a newly created drug called LSD. After its discovery in 1943, psychiatrists researched the drug for possible use for depressed, psychotic, and epileptic therapies. In the early 1950s, Gottlieb arranged for the CIA to buy the world's entire supply of LSD. Once he had collected all of the LSD on U.S. soil, he began distributing it under the guise of bogus foundations, sending it to hospitals, clinics, prisons, and other credible institutions to begin administering it in a series of research projects. Experts say that while Gottlieb technically reported to Richard Helms and CIA director at the time, Alan Dulles, in essence, he operated almost completely without supervision, and partly because his bosses didn't want to know the details. This resulted in Gottlieb never having to file serious reports when experiments ended in tragedy, and the experiments often did. In 1963, CIA Inspector General John Vance learned of the program. His office reported, quote, The concepts involved in manipulating human behavior are found by many people, both within and outside the agency, to be distasteful and unethical. As a result of this report, Project MKUltra's operations were slowly scaled back. Eventually, Gottlieb decided that LSD was not useful and that mind control was not possible. The program ended and in 1973, CIA Director Richard Helms ordered that all documentation from Project MKUltra be destroyed. But while most of the records were destroyed, information on the project remained in some 8,000 pages of financial documents that were accidentally left over. These, along with witness testimonies, would piece together the sordid history of MKUltra. A 1985 Supreme Court document identified MKUltra as 162 separate projects under one umbrella, many of which were conducted at universities and research foundations that did not even know they were taking part in a CIA experiment. Taking place all over the country, the experiments used LSD, barbiturates, hypnosis, and biological agents, and resulted in some unspeakable horrors. 
In one instance, a mental patient in Kentucky was continuously fed LSD for 174 days. And while nearly every part of the MKUltra experiment is easily viewed as horrifying, nothing is so stomach-turning and alarming as the death of Frank Olson. On November 28, 1953, government scientist Frank Olson jumped from, or was pushed, from a high-level window at the Hotel Statler in New York City. The fall killed him and the CIA claimed he jumped from the window, committing suicide due to work-related stress. In his life, Olson was recruited to work for the Army's biological lab in 1950 to develop aerosol weapons that could be transmitted through air particles. During visits to warfare research centers in UK, Paris, Norway, and West Germany, it is said that he witnessed extreme interrogations in which the CIA committed murder using biological weapons that Dr. Olson had developed. On November 24th, he told his division chief that he was resigning. His chief then suggested he head to New York for a psychological treatment. The day after Thanksgiving, Olson called home saying he was feeling better. Olson would die later that evening. While his family accepted the explanation from the CIA that his death was the result of a stress-induced suicide, they changed their mind when in 1975, details of Project MKUltra were made public. An investigation by the family would show that the window of the hotel was too small for Olson to have jumped out himself. Later in the 70s, the CIA admitted that Olson had been drugged and President Gerald Ford apologized to the family, but the cause of the death remained a mystery. In 1974, Seymour Hersh exposed the MKUltra program when he wrote about it for the New York Times. In 1977, a Senate committee conducted hearings about the project. They noted that there were effectively very few medical pre-screening procedures in place for subjects targeted in the program. Moreover, the report states, at least one death, that of Dr. Olson, resulted from these activities. The agency itself acknowledged that these tests made little scientific sense. The agents doing the monitoring were not qualified scientific observers. The test subjects were seldom accessible beyond the first hours of the test. In a number of instances, the test subject became ill for hours or days, and effective follow-up was impossible. The committee decided that the victims of MKUltra should be notified, but finding them was quite difficult since the CIA had destroyed much of the project's records. While lawsuits were filed and court cases heard demands for restitutions for victims and more information be released, ultimately little was done. According to San Francisco Weekly, only 14 people were actually notified, even though potentially thousands were exposed to MKUltra experiments. In 1994, Frank Olson's son had his father's body exhumed. A new investigation showed that Frank Olson had suffered a blow to the head before falling to his death, but a New York District Attorney investigation showed inconclusive results. The family reached a settlement with the U.S. government. While so little of what actually went on as part of the MKUltra experiment is known today, the experiments have become intertwined with pop culture. Not only have the experiments inspired media such as The Manchurian Candidate, American Ultra, and Stranger Things, many prominent authors and artists like Ken Kesey, Allen Ginsberg, and Robert Hunter, lyricist for The Grateful Dead, were not only inspired by LSD, but originally got it from MKUltra experiments. Interestingly enough, while at this point universally condemned, this secret Cold War government experiment known as MKUltra has resulted in effects that have been seen by a lot more people than will ever know the project existed. <laughs>